Rocking to the ancient rhythm. Rocking to the ancient rhythm. Love is my religion. Love is my addiction. African tradition. Free Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Prison. My name is Alexander Maya Odilon Ngu. I'm the founder of Nugu Utopia. I'm also the founder of the Ngu School. And um, today, I wanted to actually just hop on here and address um, a misconception that I think is one of the biggest misconceptions um, in the world. Um, and um, this goes really deep because I'm going to really go into an analysis of, 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 of how we as humans exchange value, right? So, so all we know is the fact that from the time that we came into the world, money existed, paper money existed, uh, coin existed, or uh, our forefathers traded with a uh, trade by barter, they exchanged goods, right? So what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to really go really deep into the difference between uh, money, which is all we know of, money, capital, as in we live in a capital capitalist society, and then I'm going to go a little bit more into value. Value is completely and a lot more encompassing than money or capital. And I'm going to go into the similarities of those of those two and the differences. And I'm going to show you why the fact that we have focused on capital um, and, and not focused on value and how that has, has affected our society. But before I go into uh, detail, I'd like to first uh, say that I have, um, I have two books coming out. Um, and this is also by where I get all this information from, guys. So I've done research for, for years and years and years, and I've been working on two books. The first book is called the NGU Theory, the NGU Theory, which is a mathematical theory, which is um, essentially aimed at unifying all the energy and all the systems in the universe. So I came up with an algorithm or with an equation or whatever you want to call it that can essentially uh, model all systems, regardless of dimensionality. And uh, I'm going to be uh, showcasing that in my book. And then I also have another book coming out called New Globe Utopia. And the whole goal of New Globe Utopia is to show how we can um, maximize each human's individual potential, thus creating a utopia, because only through maximizing individual potential can we create an, a utopia because external comparisons are never going to be the totality of anyone's reality so i have those two books coming out uh be looking forward to seeing them and uh that's where a lot of this information that i'm going to present to you today is going to come from it's going to come from my two books so going back to money guys um so what exactly is money like we live in a capitalist society, right? Everyone says that this is the most advanced uh, economic system, economic political system that's been set up since the beginning of time, they say, right? Now let's test if that's really true, right? So capitalism, where we utilize money to exchange value is, uh, is, the, system that, is the system that we're going to be talking about, right? So. It's an exchange of value. So if I want to buy something from you, I come and give you money. And let's 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 say you're an artist, or let's say you're an architect or you're a carpenter or whatever, and you make something with your physical energy, right? And someone comes and pays money for it, they're essentially exchanging this physical money for your value, for the amount of and your value can be calculated as the amount of time you put into making that 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 whatever that uh, uh um that object was or furniture or whatever uh plus the amount of resources you use uh, 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 um, uh, uh to um uh, to make this material to make this chair or whatever and so so the calculation for that value is really arbitrary guys so it's not really set in stone right which is why uh the capitalist market like if you look at the 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 the, the the stock market is so volatile and it's so unpredictable. So guys, now let's, uh, let's, so we're talking about exchange of value. Now let's elaborate more into exchange of value. 
like in the scientific sense, right? What exactly is exchange of value? Exchange of value, exchange of money is just an exchange of energy, right? Let me give you an example. So I was recently watching the UFC fight, uh, I think it was 253 or 54 uh, with Adensaya and Costa. And I was watching Adensaya interview, Adensaya interview, uh, I have to pronounce his name correctly. And he said that fighting is like, a, he's dancing essentially, right? He's, that he's, he gets his inspiration uh, or he gets his uh, skills because he used to be a dancer. And dancing is essentially just an exchange of energy. Like if you're dancing with someone, you're exchanging energy, right? Fighting is just an exchange of energy, right? Um, when um, when uh, when animals mate to to, to, to 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 procreate, that's an exchange of energy. Now let's go into the scientific realm, right? Um, when the gravity of this planet holds on to holds on to the moon uh, as it revolves around the sun, that's an exchange of energy. Electrons uh, are, are an exchange of energy. Electrons and other electrons, particles, humans together are exchange energy all the time. So guys, so now that we understand the fundamentals under what uh, value is, uh, value exchange is just an exchange of energy, right? So it's completely arbitrary. It's not set in stone. It's not defined by anyone. It's completely arbitrary, right? So that's what value is. Now let's go back to what capital is because we live in a capitalist society, a capitalist system, right? Capitalism is an exchange of capital for value, right? So, so you remember capital has to be created by a human. Capital has to be created and then artificially defined by a human. A system had to print the money out and then tell you that the money was worth something for you to start utilizing that to exchange value, right? Now that we understand that, hold that thought. Boom. So now, now that we know that money is just capital, right? And capital is just an exchange of, capital can be used to exchange value between people, right? I can exchange, I can do something for you, then you pay me or vice versa, right? And value exchange is just an exchange of energy. Like we said with uh, Adensaya, the, the UFC fighter, uh, where when he fights or dances, he's exchanging energy with his partner, or when an electron and another electron are, are, are bounded together and are spinning around and, 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 and exchange energy or as planets, uh, as Earth and the Moon, or as the Sun and planet Earth exchange energy as they have their own dance, right? It's essentially a dance in a certain pattern and sequence, right? So now we understand that uh, energy is essentially going to be at the fundamental root of this exchange of value, this exchange of capital, this exchange of money, right? So now, guys, let's go and speak a little bit about uh, some ancient, some old scientists, right? Because obviously with 2020 now, we're gonna go a little bit in the past, right? So let's go to Newton. So Newton's third law, Newton defined the energy, Newton's third law defined that the energy exchange between uh, particles, at least in the subatomic scale, uh, I mean, at least in the, um, uh, uh, the macroscopic scale with the apple fall on his head, uh, that energy that for every action, there's an opposite of equal reaction, right? So Newton defined that there is this boundness between all particles, right? So that's where that comes from. Now, Isaac Newton, while later, came and really revolutionized a lot of things by defining that with this exchange going on between particles, the energy is equal to the mass of one of those particles times the speed of light squared. That's where Einstein got the E equal MC square uh, 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 theory from, right? And the beautiful thing about this theory, everyone, is that this theory has helped us define the material universe. We utilize Einstein's theory to essentially uh, define mass because that's what he says energy, which is what we know is arbitrary, is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. So now we can define mass, whether it's 
a planetary mass or with a human mass or with the apple falling on the head of Isaac Newton. It's still the same. So now with the revolutionized love. Life. So now we understand how to deal with energy in the physical realm. Einstein, let, let, let me give the shout out to the, to the scientists, Einstein, the Schrodinger's, the Maxwell's, you know, the, the Feynman's, you know, these guys all contributed to what we have today with our understanding of the material universe, right? So now here, now, what do we know about the universe in totality? What we know that is that the reason why Einstein actually never solved the hardest problem was because he was never able to unite the, this material universe that we understand because he knows that with, with our five senses, we can understand this material universe. But there's also an immaterial universe. The immaterial universe, we can use an example of um, a shining light through a prism and it, it shows you a, a, an entire array of colors of the, uh, of the spectrum of light. You know, something that's hidden is now visible. That's how that's how the material and the material world work, right? So now the problem, guys, is that Einstein's theory of E equal mc square, or energy equal to the mass and the speed of light square, uh, uh, only sort of works in the material realm. So once we go into the immaterial realm, things start to break down. Once once we go really deep into energy, into really high density energy, like around black holes. They, they, they call them singularities in the mathematical world, Einstein's equations begin to break down, right? And the problem with that is because we have or had a limited understanding of the immaterial universe. So now, guys, here is where my theory comes in. My theory is called the Ngu theory, the NGU theory. And the whole point of the Ngu theory is to unify, is to unify the field, is to unify all fields, to unify the material field, and unify the immaterial field. So Einstein had studied the material field. All these great scientists, the shoulders of, uh, of greatness, contributed to, 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 to us understanding the universe like we do today. But, 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 but until now, I think 2020 might change it, is we had limited understanding of the immaterial realm. And because of that, our systems in the material realm where we're, we're, are, are inefficient, essentially, because they're built on false assumptions or incomplete assumptions. And these are assumptions of only material. Understand? So I'm gonna go to a, one of the little images I made for my theory to show you, an under, uh, just a image I made here to show you, to show you guys how the universe is um uh, ex exists so to the right of the zero is the material universe as it expands and to the left of it is the immaterial universe as it as it goes negative negative infinity and it gets denser and denser and denser which is why it's just very small and dark right and all together we have both material and immaterial creating the universal consciousness of the universe right and this is the fundamental understanding of the universe that we have to understand and we have to build all systems based on this understanding, right? So now we understand that the universe is made of material and immaterial. Now, what do we understand about immaterial, right? So actually, no, you know what? What do we understand about material? Let's start there. We know that in the material realm, we understand the material realm because it's real. That's where real numbers exist. The material realm begins with zero, one, two, three, four. It's the material realm, right? Now, here is here is uh, the material realm. If you guys can see that, it's the numbers going all the way to infinity, right? And the other way as long as they're real whole numbers, right? That's the material realm, right? Now, what do we define as the immaterial realm? Because what we, what we failed to, under, to understand was that, what we failed to understand was that within that zero, 
was also an infinite universe. That's what we feel to understand. That within that zero, we have an infinite universe. We have an infinite micro-dimensional universe. And I'm going to elaborate in one second, right? So, so zeros are written wrongly because every zero should have an infinity symbol inside of it because the infinity symbol essentially is signifying that within the zero is an infinite micro-dimensionality of energy. And let me elaborate on what that means if some of you are lost. So in the material realm, energy is macro-dimensional, as in it's expanding and it's, and it's growing constraints and it's getting colder. So, so, so if you can imagine an inception point, this inception point began very hot, right? Boom, like a bomb. And then as the edges get colder, the core was the hottest and it's getting colder. That's the, that's the macro dimensionality of the universe. That's why, that's why things are crystallizing into material, right? But in the immaterial realm, we have micro dimensionality of energy. What does that mean? It means that the energy is actually, instead of expanding, is being compounded. The energy, essentially imagine this, imagine energy, the same amount of energy is being put into a, something that's smaller and smaller and smaller. So you t let, let's say you take a cup, you, you take a bottle, right? You, 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 fill, it, you fill it with, a, with, a, um, with, with liquid or, 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 or whatever, or, 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 or gas. And then you, then you take that same amount of energy you pour it into something that is less, is half the size of that, right? You force it in, it builds the pressure. And then next, the next thing you do, you cut that in half again, and then you force the same energy into something that's half the size of that. And do that for infinity. That's the micro-dimensionality of energy. The macro-dimensionality of energy is the growth of constraints that creates the material universe. That's why humans are different from each other. Even though our ancient fathers were the same person, but we're different because we're growing in dimensionality. We're getting colder. We're, 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 we're moving farther and farther away from the source, from the zero. But within the zero, we've ignored the micro-dimensionality within the zero, an infinite universe of possibilities. Now, what do we define or, or, or how do we define this immaterial universe? This immaterial universe is micro-dimensional, and this means that it's it's indeterministic. It means that in the immaterial world, we it's hard to predict the positions of particles. It's hard to predict the, 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 the positions of of, 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 of any of, of any particle in the in the in the, in the, in the it's mostly guesses, statistical guesses of where it might be at a certain point, right? But going to the material realm, like look at look at the movements of planets. We can actually predict exactly where a planet is going to be. We, it's it, the macro-dimensional material universe is predictable. It's certain. The immaterial universe with micro-dimensionality of energy, where energy is being stuffed into smaller, smaller packages, that's that's indeterministic. Thus, it's unpredictable. Thus, uncertainty is very high. It's very high, right? Now, what does that mean? That means that in the micro-dimensional world, things are open-ended. Things are guesses. Things can be, a particle can be in the same place and another place at the same time. That's what it means. It means that the micro-dimensional universe is way more expansive and way less constrained than the material universe. The material universe is extremely constrained. You guys see what I'm saying? Now, guys, this is something that we have to really understand to the fundamental level to then test to see if systems in this material realm are efficient or could be more efficient, right? So now that we understand how our universe is built and set up, now I'm going to go into more detail as to how the system of capitalism or the system of uh, of, uh, of money exchange is, uh, is only partial uh, when it comes to the ability for humans to express their potential, right? The, the, the uh, capital money is constrained to the material realm because it has to be created in, by material and defined, right? But it's an immaterial realm of value. 
every human being has infinite value. That is what that means. The infinity inside the zero. So to the right of the zero, this, to the right of the zero, we grow one, two, three, and we go up. That's the world we live in. The world we live in stops at zero. But what we forget to realize, and this is that's this is why we're so stuck in the material, we're so constrained. When we realize that there's an, there's an entire immaterial realm, then when we model our human systems, our earthly systems, after the actual fingerprint of the universe, the actual source code of the universe. The actual source code of the universe. The source code of the universe that defines consciousness. It unifies material and immaterial. It unifies deterministic and indeterministic. It unifies certainty and uncertainty. It unifies the microdimensional and the macrodimensional. This is the fundamental thing and one of the most important things you guys are ever going to learn. Every system can be tested for efficiency. And if that system doesn't have a, a, a unification with this source code of the universe, that, that system is inefficient and it's not designed for humanity's benefit. Thus, I'm going to now go back to my original statement about the idea of ex the exchange of value. The reason why we've not been able to create a perfect system on earth for to allow humans to exist in harmony and exchange value is because we're stuck in a constrained capitalist or whatever you want to call it system that is artificially defined in the material realm by a human. You are, you are, you are educated and, and sort of trained to believe in the system so the system works. The universal system of energy exchange does not require an external force. It exists because every human has infinite potential. Every human on this planet has infinite potential. And guys, this is what I'm focused on at New Globe Utopia. My job at New Globe Utopia, that's the reason why I started that company, was to make sure that I help everyone that I possibly can to be able to unlock this infinite energy that is within them. Do not let yourself be constrained in the material realm. Do not let yourself value yourself based on what an, a predetermined value was or a predetermined algorithm was and the algorithm of capitalism where you exchange capital, you exchange money defined by someone else. The human is a system. And this system, if, if, if it connects to the, to the universe with a perfect source code, can have a hundred percent efficiency. But based on the system that the system that we build in our society, our educational system, our, our political systems, our governmental systems, our, 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 our healthcare systems, they are not built to be a hundred percent efficient. We are straying away from the truth and we need to go back. Thank you guys very much.